In Shakespeare's Love's Labor Lost, he writes, Good Lord Boyet, my beauty, though but mean, needs not the painted flourish of your praise. Beauty is bought by judgment of the eye, not uttered by based sale of Chapman's tongues. Or, in modern parlance, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It would therefore be to logic to state that if beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so is ugliness. And in the eye of this beholder, this pen is ugly. I'm Matt from The Pen Habit. Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be talking about this monstrosity. This is the Jin Hao 1200. Now, my last video, the Jin Hao X450, pen I really like a lot, a pen I've played around with a lot. I own three of them. I used to own five before I gave two away to family members for Christmas. This one, not so much. I do not love this pen, at least not the way it looks. So this pen is, I'm actually, we're going to start over here on the close-up cam. This pen is perhaps the most garish thing I have ever laid my eyes on, ever. So we'll, uh, <laughs> man, it's just hard to explain. So the top of the cap has this little black, it looks kind of like enamel um, with gold, gold filigree in it, gold colored filigree, uh, nice rounded gold ring. The clip is, and I'll, I'll get some close-up photos in here, is a dragon and supposed to have two little red eyes on here. One of the eyes has fallen out on this pen. Uh, there's a profile of the clip there. It is very, very stiff. Uh, I think you'd probably have a hard time putting this on the, the pocket of jeans or something like that. Center band says Jin Hao, and on the back it says 1200. And then it kind of tapers down to a flat end with a little black button there. Uh, the body of the pen looks as though it has been knurled. Uh, it looks like that. I, it doesn't feel knurled, though. It's very smooth. So I don't know if this is uh, a sticker or if they've treated the surface or something like that. But it is... Um, I don't know. The photos I saw online made it look kind of stately and classy. And this pen does not look stately and classy. It is garish as all get out. I, I in fact, the first time I took that pen to work, um, I, I had it out and I was just, I started writing with it in a meeting and I had the guy sitting next to me at work go, what the hell is that thing? That was kind of my, re my reaction on pulling it out of the mail. It's not an attractive pen. I, it just really isn't. Now, that begs the question, if it's not an attractive pen, why in the world did you buy it? That's a fair question. I bought it, A, because the pictures made it look interesting. It was something very different than I had. And B, it was $10. And much like the Jin Hao X450s were six or seven bucks, I have a really hard time, excuse me, I have a really hard time passing up a $10 pen, even if it's ugly, just for sheer curiosity's sake. So I, I bought it, ordered it, much like with the other Jin Hao's I've purchased online from eBay. It got here in a timely manner, and it actually writes pretty well. It's a big pen, though. Um, we're talking uh, sizes here. So while capped, it is 137 millimeters, and uncapped, we are looking at 124 so uncapped is not so bad. It's it's actually a decent uh, a decent length. Caps it's uh, posted though. It's ridiculous and it's pretty back heavy back. Oh, there we go, dropping the pen. That's why I don't do that very often. Uh, <laughs> I don't uh, post my pens all that much. But if you if I uh, measure it while posted, you're looking at 160 millimeters. But like I said back weighted. So this is not a pen I would post just for myself here. Uh, in terms of weight, it is inked up with a cartridge or with a converter and with ink, and it's 26 with uh, without the cap. You add the cap on and you're looking at 48 to 50 grams that way. It's a, it's a heavy pen. It's, a, it's one of the heavier pens in my collection and uh, tends to be even a little heavy for me. And I like a heavier pen. In terms of the nib, though, uh, 
standard, same Jim, Jin Hao nib as you found on the other, the X450s. Standard number six size nib, 18 karat gold plated, says Jin Hao. It does not have a nib size on it at all. Uh, it's, you know, and it writes very similarly. I will say that my experience with this pen is it's a little bit drier than the uh, the stock Jin Hao nibs. But uh, as I mentioned in the other review, you want to swap the nib out on this one. It's pretty easy to do. It's just a standard number six size nib. So you could find one from Goulet Pen Company or Edison or Monteverde or any of a lot of sources where you can buy Twisby even. You can take the, a nib from a Twisby pen and replace it that way. So standard number six size nib. I like these larger number six size nibs and I like that they use a standard nib. The interior of the pen, uh, the section here before we get to the, the guts of the pen here, unlike the X450s, the section is completely smooth. It taper, does taper down a little bit toward the end. It has a nice gold uh, ring around the bottom and it looks like an identical feed on this pen as was on the X450s. Uh, one big difference I noticed though is that this pen has a pretty different converter. So it is still a little on the short side, but it feels much more substantial. It's got kind of this brass ring here. It's not all clear plastic. And, uh, you know, it, it, it says Jin Hao and it ha then has the Jin Hao logo engraved on it. It looks nicer, feels a little bit heavier. Uh, barrel is metal, meshes up with metal threads, and they actually feel pretty well machined. So in general, it's, it's a well-made pen. You know, it's the same same thing I felt about the X450s. It's a well-made pen. It's a hefty pen, a little heavier. It's toward the heavy end of what I like to use. But uh, in in general, it it's it's a pretty decent pen. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of writing here. All right, this is the Jin Hao 1200, and is using a steel nib. I think it's a medium, but I don't know for sure. The ink is Noodler's Zhivago. And I'm sure the ink will look black in this video. Uh, Zhivago, for those of you who aren't familiar with the ink, is black with just a tiny hint of an army greenish color in there. So uh, it, if, it's, if you need to work in an environment where you've got to use black ink, uh, this is one that you could get away with using because it is black, but it has just a tiny hint of green in there. So if you wanted to use a color, my, my dad likes this ink a lot. I'm a little bit less enamored with it. I like brighter jewel tone type colors, but uh, it's good if you want something that's a little more professional looking, a little more staid. Uh, paper is a Rhodia dot pad. As always. And here is our writing sample. And as I mentioned, that is from Mr. Shakespeare. Um, now, as you saw, probably when I took the pen apart, I'm almost out of ink on this one. I didn't want to re-ink it up for the review. So um, it is toward the end of the, the pen, but there's is still a fair bit of ink left in the feed. Uh, but overall, this pen does not write nearly as wet as the X450 did that I showed you in my previous video. It's it's a decently moderate pen. It's still, it, it, you know, the, it kind of floats. You get enough ink that you can get that floating sensation over the top of the paper, but not so much that it, it drenches the paper. So nice, excuse me again, nice uh, moderate ink flow. 
Uh, it's the same basic nib, so you're going to get a lot of that same uh, line variation. And, and you can see I'm doing some railroading here. Uh, I can tell you when I have more ink in the pen, that's not been a problem in the past. So again, this is probably just because I'm at the end of the ink here. But yeah, you do you do get a nice bit of line variation. The, the tines will separate for such an inexpensive steel nib. Uh, upside down writing, pretty smooth. Now, in terms of smoothness, I did not find this pen to be the more smooth of the Jinhao nibs. There's a little bit of, again, on left the left hand direction, I get a little bit of a drag in the paper. Uh, I've already done a, a, a touch of smoothing here, but uh, this is probably going to require a little bit more aggressive smoothing, or what I'll probably just do is swap it out with a Goulet stub. That's uh, I've got a couple of extra Goulet nibs sitting in my my toolbox, so I'll probably do a swap out on this and just not even worry about it. But you know, it's fine as a pen. It writes well, uh, and it's it's inexpensive, and that's a good thing. It just really is not an attractive pen. At least it isn't to, to the eyes of this beholder. It's uh, it's really garish, really attention seeking. Um, the dragon, while I thought it would be a, the dragon clip, while I thought it would be cool, ended up not being cool. I was hoping that the knurled finish I was seeing in the pictures online would actually be a texture on the pen. Instead, I, it looks printed on or uh, or something. I'm not entirely. It looks like a sticker, um, and uh, and it's it's just really yellow. You know, I was hoping for a little bit more of a gold. This looks like brass instead. Um, just in terms of color. And uh, I, I don't love this pen. <laughs> it's just, it is not my favorite pen. Uh, but surely from a look standpoint. From a writing standpoint, it's a great pen and I use it. Uh, I just don't use it often because I've got other pens I like to use more and that look prettier. So that has been the uh, the eyes of this beholder and the Jin Hao 1200. Same uh, same spiel as always. Thank you for watching. Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, penhabit.com. Yeah, head over to penhabit.com to see some uh, more pictures of this than what I've included in the video. And hopefully we will uh, we'll have some more videos up for you soon. Now, it is currently New Year's Eve as I am recording this video. I'm about to uh, start my festivities with a pizza, some root beer floats, and uh, a few hours with my Xbox because that's how I do New Year's. But I did want to take a quick moment to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed, who has liked my videos, who's commented, who's watched them, to the amazing Fountain Pen community that I've had a chance to get to know a little bit this year. Uh, it's been a crazy, crazy ride for me as I have moved uh, out of being a, I mean, I'm still a technophile. I work in the software industry. I love what I do. Um, and I love technology, love technology. But I've really enjoyed getting to start writing by hand and and writing letters and getting to know people I wouldn't get to know otherwise. It's a great hobby with a great group of people, and uh, I've been really excited. Y'all are killing my bank account, though. Just killing it. <laughs> Hopefully within the next year, I will be able to learn how to uh, moderate my fountain, fountain pen spending because... If I uh, spend as much money next year on pens as I did last year on pens, I might be able to sell my collection and buy a house. So <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a feeling I think a lot of us know really well. In any case, have a wonderful new year. Many great writings, many, uh, many great new pens and new ink and new paper. I hope you in, or continue to love and enjoy the hobby. I hope you continue to watch the videos. And we'll see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Have a happy new year. Bye.